I am Fred Storr, a Tulsa resident and for 46 years, a state of Oklahoma registered professional engineer, chemical and environmental discipline. Returning to Tulsa four years ago, I became interested in Tulsa's environmental issues. Knowing that urban rivers fail bacteria standards, I became concerned that the zinc dam project materials implied that the river would be okay for recreational uses. The city, county, River Parks Authority, and the health department should be prepared to manage public exposure. For example, the great raft race required liability waivers and planned for keystone releases to augment flow and improve water quality. However, there's no evidence that the keystone rela releases resulted in improved water quality. Urban rivers always exceed bacteria standards. For example, Oklahoma City used the North Canadian River to create the Oklahoma River and celebrated with a triathlon in 2009. 45 participants experienced gastrointestinal illness. The next day, swimming and other water contact sports are now prohibited. It may be possible for Tulsa to manage river use through water quality monitoring coordinated public notices and keystone releases. Data to plan for this does not exist, but the health department is equipped to do the necessary testing. Direct measures to reduce bacteria in the Arkansas have been taken, such as disinfection of the Sand Springs sewage treatment plants effluent Data to support additional measures are not available, but there are candidates such as elimination of resident Canada geese and a new sewage system for the Berry Hill community, replacing a thousand old septic tanks. The river is also contaminated with oil, which from time to time appears along both refinery shores. The source of the oil is historic. The refineries have been operating for over 100 years. The oil floats on the groundwater, which flows under the refineries to the river. ODEQ permits require the shoreline be surveyed three times a week and floating booms maintained to attempt to contain the oil seeps. Accompanying the groundwater, on the way to the river are soluble chemicals of concern, especially methyl tertiary butyl ether, a has-been gasoline additive. The floating booms do nothing to control soluble chemicals and their effect on water quality is largely ignored. The refinery's ODEQ permits are issued under a federal law and Holly Frontier must continue to demonstrate adequate financial resources or the refineries will become Superfund sites. The refineries own the property out to the center line of the river. In 1977, Texaco leased the shore and some of the river itself to the River Parks Authority. The 1977 lease is silent regarding public exposure to historic refinery environmental issues. However, it was extended without change by Texaco to Sinclair and Sinclair to Holly Frontier. The lease ends in six years. The River Parks Authority needs a new lease that will last as long as the new bridge and Holly Frontier has committed to ODEQ that the new lease will include institutional controls. These controls will become River Parks regulations. We should expect that Holly Frontier will seek to limit any liability for public exposure along the shore and in the water. I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Thank you.